Welcome to Mainline Baits Carp Fishing TV. You join me here today at Embryo's Fields Lake in Abingdon. Now, I was given the heads up that this lake is pretty weedy and it can daunt a lot of anglers if you've not fished in weed before or if you have and you've struggled. So, I'm gonna give you my five top tips. I say top tips, it's more the fundamentals in fishing and weed. So you can fish it with confidence and catch plenty of carp. So, let's get started. Right, step one of fishing weedy lakes. Now, finding the spot is the most crucial part of fishing effectively in weed. And you can only do that if you're feeding the lead onto the bottom. So I'm gonna quickly run you through, break it down, how I do this. So we keep a tight line when casting. We always keep your eye on the lead. Just before it hits the surface of the water, I wanna make sure I've got a tight line to my lead. So when I hit the surface of the water, my lead will pendulum down hit the bottom and I will feel it at the rod tip. If I've got a slack line or any bow in my line at this stage, I'm not feeling nothing on my rod, you know? I'm not feeling nothing at all. So it's really important, tight line to the lead. You'll feel the bottom, you'll know what you're fishing over and you'll fish confident. Let's have a few casts. Right, before I make a cast, I'm just gonna pick a nice visual marker on the far margin. In this case, that big old pylon. And after that, I'll make another several casts left and right of that, just so I'm scoping out that area and I know I'm not going over the same area time and time again. Now, there's three things on a drop that I'm looking for. Number one, no drop at all. You know, that's pretty much telling me that I'm in a thick wee bed, I need to investigate more. Number two, a drop, but it's not a crack. And that's pretty much telling me that I could be on some sort of firmish silt, um, that sort of thing. Number three, being a crack. It's gonna be real hard gravel or even potentially clay as well. So I'll make a cast and we'll see what we get. I'm gonna put the glasses on. The sun's glaring in my eyes. If I lose sort of sight of that lead, I'm gonna ruin the process of feeding the lead down and I won't get it right. So I'll go for the pylon. Simple little cast. Keeping my eye on the lead. Stopping the lead before it hits the water. Drawing the rod back, feeling down. Oh, bang. Do you know what, I've got an absolute crack on the rod there. So that could be a lovely little gravelly area. And this is the time now to draw the rod to the side and investigate that area. <laughs> lovely. Right, I've had a few casts with a bare lead and I found an area now that's pretty hard. So I'm gonna investigate it by simply holding the rod quite lightly, you know, it's gonna be quite light in my hands and feeling the sensations down the rod. The braid really helps in this situation because it's got no stretch. So I get to feel everything what the bottom's telling me. And look at that, it's lovely. It's coming back with loads of little dinks on the end of my rod tip and I can feel it through my hands as well. And that is telling me that that is a beautiful gravelly area amongst quite a bit of weed. I'm gonna keep dragging it back until it locks up, which is basically telling me I'm hitting weed which will just there. There you go, look, I can't bring it any further. So I'm gonna pop that in the clip, have a few more casts and get that bang on the money. Right, now that I've found a lovely gravel area amongst all that weed, we've got to move on to stage two, the rigs. Now, if I was forced into fishing the weed, I couldn't find any gravel spots, for instance. You know, I could, I could opt for a chod rig or a hinge stiff rig and things like that. But because I've done all the homework now, I've spent the time working out what's in front of me and finding that nice clear area, 
I can fish rigs appropriate to that spot. And I'm gonna up for one of my favorites, a little wafter rig. Um, I've got this in a little helicopter setup, and I've, this rig's quite long as well, sort of nine, 10 inches. And when this comes down the water, that's gonna nestle down and fish lovely on that gravel area. Hook bait choice, you know, I've gone for a very neutral balanced bait. Uh, these are the, the cell and essential cell cork dust wafters, you know, but use your imagination. You could use pastel barrel wafters, you could fish a little snowman rig, anything that's gonna nestle down very slowly in and amongst that gravel or any little bits of weed that are sticking up, it's just gonna be fishing for me all the time. It's all well and good talking about it. Let's get him on the money. Right, that is three rods, absolutely bang on the yard stuff amongst the weed. Let's see what tonight brings. Right, we've covered stage one, we've covered stage two, but we can't really get to stage three unless we're on some carp. It was a very quiet night last night. Didn't really see much in front of me, but this morning I've seen a fair few fish on the back of the wind. So, we need to up sticks, run through them stages again, and get them rods on the money. Right, we've just got into the new swim. Same process before, bare lead. My braided spod rod. We need to find a spot. In this case, we've got a, we've got a, not a strong crosswind, but a crosswind, and it's really important that we now keep a tight line to that lead. Any slack in it, we're not going to feel what's on the bottom, and we are literally not going to find out what is on the bottom. So, let's have a quick cast out there and see what we feel. I didn't even get a drop, you know, I've pretty much cast out, the leads hit the surface and straight away I'm in the weed, I can feel it, I didn't get that bop, it was just weed. So now is the time to bounce the lead over the weed and let the lead find the clear areas for us. So we're keeping a tight line to the lead, like so, and I'm just going to bounce the lead in and out of the weed. And I know once it drops out of the weed and onto a gravel it will go doop 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 bang, and that's what I'm looking for, them little clear areas. So I'm gonna keep pulling the lead over the weed, bang, see? Literally just come over, come over, went down and plopped amongst it. So now I'm gonna investigate the bottom. Look at that, living the dream. That is what it's about with fishing in weed. Use your lead, use your rod, bounce that lead over the weed, Get on that hard area, investigate it, get it in the clip, and before you know it, we'll be fishing in one cast.
Right, stage three of fishing in the weed effectively is bait application. And not only that, but bait accuracy as well, you know. I've spent all that hard work finding a nice clear area. What I don't want to do is put me nice mix into the weed. You know, the fish want to be in the weed anyway. It's their home. That's where their natural food is. They've got no real reason to leave it. So it's really important that my spawns land on the spot, you know, on that lovely hard area that I found. If I start putting bait into the weed, they're just gonna stay in there, feed on my bait, and I'm not gonna catch them. So it's really important that these spawns land absolutely bang on the money. Just like that one there. Lovely, you know, I'm drilling these ones straight down the line and they're landing plumb. Like I say, if that spawn was to wave on the cast a little bit, it happens. I just probably have bought the spawn halfway through the cast let it drop short. I'd rather it baited up short than in the weed and they're not gonna come out. So my bait itself, what am I got in the mix? I've got one of my favorites, cell. So many carp on the cell, you know, it's got a proven track record of catching loads of carp. Um, also essential cell, I love that in the mix too, a little bit of color. And the old response pellets, you know, carp love pellets. It keeps them grabbing around on the spot for ages as well. And um, also to the mix, which is really, really important is a good liquid okay now i'm using the smart liquid i basically want to get that water column filled up with food signals so it drags the fish out of the weed and onto my area you know your mix can be anything you could have emp in it it could have corn in it whatever it may be you really important that you've got a food attractor in there to sort of drag them out of the weed as they're swimming through it and onto your spot these bombs are landing absolutely plumb on the money so if they rock up tonight, there's a good chance, I hope so anyway, we nick a fish. Right, step four of fishing in the weed is landing fish. Now, trust me, when that alarm goes off, they will do their utmost best to get themselves back in the weed and cause me all sorts of problems. But there's one thing I can do to dramatically change that and land just about every single fish, and that is by dropping the lead. Now, you've got three or four options. You've got inline drop-off systems, you've got lead clip options, you've also got helicopter setups. Exactly what I'm using now. A little helicopter setup in conjunction with a heli safe. Now, when the carp comes along, picks up my hook bait and hooks itself, any tension on that heli safe, as so, will drop the lead and that fish then will naturally come up in the water, away from weed, away from other debris, and also away from our other lines, which could become a snag. So, by simply dropping leads in weedy situations, like I said, we will land more fish. Right, stage five of fishing in the weed is line lay. Now it sounds pretty basic, but it's very, very important. I want a nice straight line to my spot. Now I'm fishing all three rods to the same area. I don't want my left hand rod going over my middle rod or my middle rod going over my right, right hand rod. I want all three lines straight down the middle and fishing lovely. Any slack line could get into the weed. And when I do hook a fish, that's gonna cause me problems. So take your time, don't move that lead but get yourself a nice, straight, tight line. That's perfect. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscription button. If you want to watch more how-to videos, we'll leave the links to these just here.